In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O most merciful God, who has given your only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us, and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins. And by your Holy Spirit, increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will and true obedience to your word, to the end that by your grace we may come to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and has given his only Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe on his name, he gives power to become the children of God, and has promised them his Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. Amen. Remember your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love. For they, are, for they have been from of old. Let not my enemies exalt over me. Redeem Israel, O God, out of all his troubles. O God, you see that of ourselves we have no strength. By your mighty power, defend us from all adversities that may happen to the body, and from all evil thoughts that may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for the second Sunday in Lent is written in the book of Genesis, the 32nd chapter. The same night, Jacob arose and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his eleven children, and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream and everything else that he had. And Jacob was left alone. And the man wrestled with him until the breaking of the day. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he touched his hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, Let me go, for the day is broken. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And he said to him, What is your name? 
And he said, Jacob. Then he said, Your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have striven with God and with men, and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. But he said, Why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life has been delivered. The sun rose upon him as he passed Penuel, limping because of his hip. Therefore, to this day, the people of Israel do not eat the sinew of the thigh that is on the hip socket, because he touched the socket of Jacob's hip on the sinew of the thigh. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is written in St. Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, the fourth chapter. Finally then, brothers, we ask and urge you in the Lord Jesus that as you receive from us how you ought to live and to please God, just as you are doing, that you do so more and more. For you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immorality, that each one of you know how to control his own body in holiness and honor, not in the passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one transgress and wrong his brother in this matter, because the Lord is an avenger in all things. As we told you beforehand and solemnly warned you, for God has not called us for impurity, but in holiness. This is the word of the Lord. O give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Who can utter the mighty deeds of the Lord, or declare all his praise? Blessed are they who observe justice, who do righteousness at all times. Remember me, O Lord, when you show your favor to your people. Help me when you save them. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 15th chapter. Jesus went away from there and withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and was crying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. But he did not answer her a word. And his disciples came, begging him, saying, Send her away, for she is crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, It is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs see the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, O woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed instantly. This is the Gospel of the Lord. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As Christians, we are constantly on the front lines fighting against our spiritual enemies, the devil, the world, and even our own sinful flesh. But what happens when God is our opponent? From Job to Paul and others in between, many have wrestled with God. For example, our Old Testament reading for this morning shows us that Jacob literally wrestled with the Son of God all night until dawn. Jacob struggled with God and man and won. His prize? God blessed Jacob with a new name, Israel. Jacob would say about this, I have seen the face of God, and yet my life has been delivered. Sometimes we have our struggles against God when the diagnosis comes back, when we don't make the cut, when that relationship falls apart. We wrestle with God, though not physically, but by faith. For we not only battle against flesh and blood, against the philosophies of this world, and against the devil and his demons, but oftentimes Christ, who is our best friend and our ally, hides his face from us. He's like an enemy, someone who's against us. He's like an opponent that we have to hold on to and to say with Jacob, I will not let go unless you bless me. We have an example of this spiritual battle in today's gospel. The Canaanite woman wrestled in a way with Christ the Lord until finally she received help and a blessing from him. She would not let go. She wanted her daughter to be healed, to have her free from her demon possession. She held Christ to his promise, and he did it. How did this happen? How can we too win the victory of faith? Faith is our trust in God, and it's often tested through various trials and different ordeals. This believing Canaanite woman came to Christ, laid her need before him, and asked for help. But she didn't immediately receive that help. She went through testing and through trial. And Christ deals with his own in this way as well. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. God's gift is far more precious to us. His gift of faith is far more precious than gold. Gold is a metal like any other metal. It will not last. But as gold is purified by fire... So faith is also made more valuable, stronger, by the struggles that we face. A campfire burns more brightly when it has plenty of wind and air to stoke it. And this, in one way, seems sort of counterproductive. Won't the wind blow out the fire? If the flames and coals, though, are burning right, it will only continue to grow hotter and even brighter. This is the same way in which faith that is tested comes about and becomes stronger as well. Faith is placed in dangerous situations, and yet it endures. So we can encounter danger. We can encounter even death with confidence. Unplowed fields produce no crops. If everything is nice and quiet without any troubles, our faith stands in far greater danger when real trials do come along. So what do these tests and what do these challenges to us actually look like? What is it like to wrestle with God? 
We see four examples of these hardships that test faith in today's story of Christ and this Canaanite woman. The first test is hardships from outside. The Canaanite woman, she had a heavy cross, a heavy burden to bury, to carry. It was the fact that her daughter was possessed by a demon. In the same way, God sends troubles upon us to the point where we have to endure them or our loved ones have to endure them. Even a severe cross. In this, though, faith, patience, and hope are tested and are not found lacking. We rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. God sends trials so that our faith shines with patience. However, this faith does not simply exist in itself. It must be sustained. Therefore, the Canaanite woman goes straight to Christ and begs for help. So our crosses should also move us to pray. In our darkest hours, we come to see our need. We come to see, at times, even our unworthiness. We see how short life is. At this time, we turn to the one who is worthy, the one who is eternal, and who fulfills our every need. Whenever God's faithful people of the Old Testament times, whenever they were filled with doubt, whenever they, were, whenever they cried out to God, why? They would do so at the Ark of the Covenant. There, they would seek God's favor. They would lay it all before him at his throne of grace. Hannah did this in the midst of her barrenness. She cried out to the Lord, and the Lord answered her prayer. And even now, you and I have a far greater means, a far greater way to call out to our God. By Christ, we have complete and open access to our Father, to his loving heart, anytime and anywhere. And again, this Canaanite woman's prayer, her faith, it was not found in her. It was grounded in the mercy of our God in Christ. He is the Almighty Lord who is able to overcome the devil who is able to overcome death. He is the son of David, the anointed one. He is the one who has pity on us. He is both powerful and gracious to us. The second testing of faith encountered by the Canaanite woman is the postponement of help. Christ gives this Canaanite woman no answer. So it often happens that our Lord does not send his help right away to us, does not send his help on our terms. How long wilt thou forget me, O Lord, forever? How long wilt thou hide thy face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? O my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not, and in the night season I am not silent. I will say unto God, my rock, why hast thou forgotten me? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of my enemy? As, for, as with swords in my bones, my enemies reproach me, while they say daily to me, Where is thy God? Keep not silence, O God. Hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. What King David and what this Canaanite woman experienced, God also carries out with us today as well. How do we act in these trying times? We learn from this Canaanite woman. She did not give up. She continued to offer her prayers to God. So too, we should not think of God's silence to us or even his lack of help as something that he is withholding from us, withholding our request or refusing us. This is an exercise of faith. This third test of faith in today's gospel, is the temptation of believing the lie. It's believing the lie that God's promises don't really apply to us. This thought frequently pops up in our hearts 
when we're anxious, and when we're doubting. How do we overcome this? Look again to this Canaanite woman. She will not leave Christ. She chases after him. She falls down before him and cries out to him for help. She trusts a promise that applies also to her as well to every sinner. As I live, declares the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. So lock in on God's word of promise for you. Trust it more than you trust yourself. Our hearts betray us. His promise never fails. The fourth and the final test of faith is seen in, God, in today's gospel is the feeling that this Canaanite woman had of her unworthiness. Christ here says to that Canaanite woman, it is not right to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. Christ regarded her as a dog, being unworthy of her help, being outside of those whom he was to serve. And there are times, too, when we may feel this way, unworthy of God's help. And still, honesty and humility, they meet together. And the gift of faith and God's promise that only Christ can give wins the day. Yes, Lord, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Yes, I am a dog. Yes, I am unworthy. But your promise applies to poor, worthless, miserable sinners, unworthy sinners like me. So give me the crumbs. If you feel unworthy, go to the breadcrumb of God's divine mercy. Even though I'm, I may be unworthy, I still desire the breadcrumbs of your grace, O oh Lord. Even though I am a sinner, you promise to receive each individual poor, miserable sinner who makes his way to you in true repentance. Even though I'm not worthy of your help, I believe your faithful promise. Lord, if you share the breadcrumbs of your mercy with me, you will not be poor for it. But I will be full and I will be satisfied. If you lift me up to sit with you, your lap will not be any more crowded. But I will be safe. Christ publicly praises the faith of this Canaanite woman. He praises all who trust in him as well. He does no less for us. O woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you desire. Amen. The peace of God which passes on our stand. Keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. In our prayers this day, we remember those who are listed in our bulletin. Today, especially, we pray for Rick Hopkins, uh, who will be having surgery this week, for Heidi Scroggins, for good test results, medical tests, uh, Diane McPherson and Kirk Lee, who are both recovering from surgery, Nida Needham, who is a friend of Georgia Witt, hospitalized, 
for Julie Kettleson, who is home from the hospital but recovering, and Marlene Lee and Cliff Alt as well regarding their health concerns. We pray also for peace in Ukraine and throughout the world. Also today we add to our prayers uh, Yvetta Wild, who is the daughter of Edna Olgen. Uh, she has, had, has health concerns. We pray for her and her health. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Shepherd of all of Israel, our Lord and Master, remember your tender mercies and your loving kindness of old. Do not let our enemies triumph over us, and do not depart from us until you have blessed us. And as you strove for Jacob, so strive now for your faithful people, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Remember all pastors in Christ, especially Matthew, our synod president, Robert Lee, our district president, for Greg, our circuit visitor. Renew this congregation among your saints in faith as we cling to you in adversity. Boldness to oppose the devil and resist the flesh and compassion to serve one another in love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Remember the households of this congregation, O Lord. Provide help and companionship to those who live alone and foster love between husbands and wives, parents and children that our homes would not be places of worship of our bellies, glory and shame to set on our minds or earthly things, but a refuge here for a foretaste of the heavenly home to come for us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Remember our nation and those that you have placed in authority, O Lord. Give them wisdom and integrity and grant that neither they nor the citizens of our land would hinder your church or despise your calling of repentance. Remember those in the way of violence and war. Watch over those in Ukraine and elsewhere who live in fear of attack. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Remember the sick and the afflicted, O Lord. We pray especially this day for Ron, Liz, Blake, and Pat, Brian, Lisa, and Rick, Oscar, Dorothy, Carrie, and Karen. Warren, Karen, Craig and Karen, Bob, Greg, and John, Wayne, Raymond, Carl, and Mary. This week especially we pray for Rick, Heidi, Diane, and Kirk, as well as Nina, Julie, Marlene, Cliff, as well as we pray for Yvetta and all those that we name before our hearts. Deliver them from, for the sake of Christ, who cast out demons and perform cures on his way to finish his course on the cross. Strengthen their faith and hold them fast, who rose again and raised them also. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we implore you by your Holy Spirit to strengthen our hearts and to confirm our faith and hope in your grace and mercy. Although that we have reason to fear for the sake of our conscience, our sin, and our unworthiness, let us nevertheless hold fast like the woman of Canaan to your grace. In every trial and temptation, let us find you a present help and refuge. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord. 
made thee I love with all my heart. I pray thee ne'er from me depart. With tender mercy cheer me. Earth has no pleasure I would share. Yea, heaven itself were void and bare. If thou, Lord, wert not near me, and should my heart for sorrow break, my trust in thee can nothing shake. Thou art the portion I have sought, thy precious blood my soul has bought. Lord Jesus Christ, my God and Lord, my God and Lord, forsake me not, I trust thy word. Yea, Lord, t'was thy rich and gave my body, soul, and all I have. This poor life of labor. Lord, grant that I in every place may glorify thy lavish grace and help and save my neighbor. Let no false doctrine me beguile. Let Satan not my soul defile. Give strength and patience unto me to bear my cross and follow thee. Lord Jesus Christ, my God and Lord, my God and Lord, in death thy comfort still afford. Lord, let at last thine angels come to Abram's bosom, bear me home that I may die unfearing. And in its narrow chamber keep my body safe in peaceful sleep until thy reappearing. And then from death awaken me, that since mine eyes will joy may see. O God of God, thy glorious face, my Savior and my font of grace. Lord Jesus Christ, my prayer attend, my prayer attend. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, you have caused all Scripture to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that by patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious unto you. 
The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you His peace. Amen. As many of you know, I've been contemplating a divine call to serve at Village Lutheran Church in Ladue, Missouri, which is in the St. Louis area, for the last three weeks. And after much prayer and contemplation, I've accepted the call to serve as pastor at Village Lutheran. Right now, the plan is, is that my farewell service will be the Sunday after Easter, and then installation sometime in the middle of May um, at Village. Those details have not been worked out. I know that this congregation is in the confident and sure hands of a faithful shepherd in our Pastor Froilan, and my prayers will attend to you as we also uh, do the process of, of going through a vacancy here at Christ Lutheran, which we, we have not had one for quite some time. My prayers attend you as we just got done singing, and I pray that your prayers will continue to attend our family during this uh, transition as well. And you all need to know, I love you very much, and this was a very difficult decision. Thank you, and Continue to keep Christ Lutheran and our family in your prayers. God is with us.
I know. I'm sorry. It's sad. <laughs> you and a lot of people, and I. It's hard. I'm sorry. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.